Ciao, mi chiamo Roberto, and I'm here in Rome, uh, and it's Thursday, and it's the rough cuts and that, and today I'm going to review Independence Day. So, Roman Holiday is the story of um, Audrey Heppers. She plays uh, this queen of an unnamed Western, Eastern European country or something, which kind of implies that one of her parents has recently died, which they don't go into because it would just bring the tone down. And so she's pissed off with living the good life and eating like, I don't know, croissants for breakfast, lunch and dinner, and handshake rich and famous people and that, and generally do fuck all for a living. Sounds like a total drag. And in the scene where she lets us know that she's sick of it, it's totally brilliant. She's in bed, she's lying in the bed at the end of a long day, and her secretary's reading out the list of engagements that are coming up for the next day. And you know, it's the same thing, it's balls and endless feasts and banquets and going to these fantastic palaces. And for some reason, it's, it sounds a bit crap to her. So she goes mental. It would be funny if it wasn't for the fact that I think she won an Oscar for that. She's essentially Lindsay Lohan on crack. This is not to say that Hepburn wasn't better in a, in a, later on in her career and, you know, worthy of awards and stuff. It's just that in this film, she's, um, she's toss. So she decides to escape from the palace and go out and have a little mooch around Rome. So she escapes onto the streets of Rome, but once she's got there, she's got no idea what to do, so she instantly falls asleep. She's, um, she's a knobhead. So the thing about Roman Holiday is that it wouldn't have worked anywhere else. Could you imagine if they'd set it in Morecambe Bay? Morecambe Bay holiday, it would be shit. I mean, look what, look what coming to Rome does to people. They're sitting on some steps, right? Because they were in a shit movie. Look at these assholes. They could be in any other place in this city where there's no one, and yet they're here like bellends. <laughs> in their millions. Because they saw these steps on the TV screen. What's the point? Hannah, why are we here? We're just passing through, dickhead. So, after she's been kipping away on a park bench like some kind of hobo, Gregory Peck turns up. He's the uh, American who's parachuted in the film, so we can see Rome through uh, non-European eyes. He he's, got he's got to rescue her, right? That's integral to the plot. But he can't be too eager to rescue this 19-year-old, easily rapeable lady. So they've got to work out a way of having him bring her back to his apartment without him looking like a sex pest, like he's on some kind of register. So the way they do that is he just he sort of thinks about leaving her there on the bench and then when a taxi comes up and he, they pile into the taxi and she's still like sort of like half comatose, he tries to get the taxi driver to just drive away with her. I think they come here to Giolitti at one point for a gelato. Ice cream to you plebs. But, uh, <laughs> but you don't want to go there, it's fucking gash. Go to uh, San Crispino around the corner. Fucking Malto Benny decades. So in their efforts to make him not look like a massive rapist, he ends up looking like uh, like he just doesn't care. As long as long as he, as long as he doesn't rape her, it's fine. Just leave her on a park bench, yeah. Just let some dick end come along. So you have no sympathy for her because she's whinging and crying about being rich, and no sympathy with him because he doesn't like women. And so about 25 minutes in, you turn the film off and decide to just fuck it off. At some point they picked up here at the Chevy Fountain, but I wouldn't know, because by that point I turned the movie off and deleted it from my iTunes library. Um, see all those PS down there? Uh, apparently they throw about 8,000 euros worth of hard moolah into that fountain every day. That just shows you the IQ of the average tourist. I'm out of it. The thing that really creeped me out about this film, most of all, was Audrey Hepburn's waistline. It's, it is seriously so narrow that it's nauseating. I don't know what, it, it looks like it's 20 inches or something, or like 18, 19 inches. People talk today about people like, um, um, what's her name from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Keira Knightley. And, and this look being too thin, and how magazines are making people feel they should, they should be thinner, and how it's a modern phenomenon, but it's not. This is 50 odd years ago, and Audrey Hepburn's walking around looking like a rake. So, if you think this film's good, then tell me why you think it's good. Um, you're wrong, but just tell me anyway. The film's shit. And, it, and if you can convince me to watch the remaining hour of the film, then you win a prize. Okay, anyway, bye, I'm off to enjoy Rome. See you, dickhead!
it's not really it's incredibly ob obvious. It's not really obvious that we're here. Yeah, it is. I don't think it is. 